There we go. All right. Well, welcome everyone. I am so glad that you are here to learn more about Canva today. And oh my goodness, I am. I wish that we had sunny weather. We've actually have some sun, but I would love for it to be a little bit warmer out there. Today, we are going to be learning about how to design in Canva. And I'm going to be sharing lots of different ways that you can create in Canva and then start thinking about how you're going to be able to bring this into your classroom and be able to share with students. And as Katie mentioned, any questions you have, feel free to put those in the chat. Happy to answer um, as we go. I really want this session to be customized uh, for you and really meet your needs so that you can leave feeling really empowered to begin using Canva. So I would love to do a little check to see where we are at with your comfortability in Canva. So one to five, you can put this in the chat. How comfortable are you? One would be maybe you're a brand new user and maybe you haven't even opened up Canva before or maybe you haven't started creating yet in Canva. A five would be maybe you're already bringing this into your classroom and using it daily or weekly with students. I would say weekly would, would grant yourself a five as well. All right, so we have twos, threes, great. We've got a one, that is great too, love it. This is really helpful for me because I um, can know who to, like when to slow down, when to speed up, maybe some things that I can just address shortly that I maybe wouldn't have otherwise. Um, and I hope that all of you leave today really with some new, just new ideas and new um, learning that you're going to be able to carry out and and bring into your classrooms because Canva is such a great tool. I am Tisha Richmond and I am a Canva learning consultant. I have been using Canva since 2014 and that was before Canva for Education came onto the scene. And so I've loved Canva for a very long time. I also am a student engagement and professional development specialist in Medford, Oregon. So I am on the West Coast in the Southern part of the state. And I also am a Canva for Education content creator. So I do create some of the templates in the Canva library. And I also am the author of Make Learning Magical. And it's all about transforming your teaching and creating unforgettable learning experiences in your classroom. So Canva fits right in line with that. It's what, one of the reasons I love Canva so much. You can connect with me in a lot of different places. So feel free to do that. I always am happy to answer questions. Sometimes I know the questions come after the sessions and that is perfectly fine for you to reach out to me. So this is the agenda for today. Uh, for those that are maybe the ones and the twos and you're still not totally sure what Canva for Education is, I'll just do a very quick overview of that. And then we'll begin talking about how to design in Canva. I'm going to share with you some editor tips and tricks. And uh, depending on time, we'll give a little bit of time for hands-on learning at the end and have time for Q&A. So what is Canva for Education? Education, got something in my throat. Canva for Education is a visual communications platform that is really all in one. So when you think about creating anything digitally, you're gonna be able to create that in Canva with the visual suite. And in the visual suite, you're gonna find docs and websites and videos and infographics and book covers and logos and presentations. And so really, Canva gives you this platform to create just about anything that you can possibly think of. And the beautiful thing is it's really available for everyone in your school system and it's intuitive enough for everyone to use it. And I have been in kinder classrooms in my own district and I am amazed at how quickly students are able to navigate and learn how to create in Canva. I get this question a lot. People ask, why is Canva for education free? And at Canva, we believe that education is a human right. And Canva for Education empowers everyone to create, collaborate, and communicate, not only in your classroom, but beyond as well. And one thing that we find to be unique about Canva is that the skills that students are learning when they are in Canva are going to transcend the K-12 landscape. So Canva for Education is exactly like the platform that many industries use. 
this is an industry, it's becoming an industry standard. So companies like Walt Disney and Amazon are using Canva. Many small businesses are using Canva. And so we are teaching them skills that are going to go beyond their school experience. And we also support the four main categories of the ISTE student standard. So creative communicator, global collaborator, empowered learner, innovative designer, all of those categories really are categories that match what students can do in, in the Canva for Education platform. And really with Canva, anything is possible. And that is becoming more and more true every day as more and more features are released in the Canva platform. So we're gonna start with just a little icebreaker and we're gonna start by going into a Canva whiteboard. And Canva whiteboards are awesome because they are a space that has no borders. There are no walls on this design. There are no dimensions. You can go in any direction in infinite amount, uh, amounts of, of ways. And so this is a great place for students to be able to collaborate. So to share this with all of you, I'm gonna go up to my share menu. I wanna make sure it's on anyone with a link and I wanna make sure it is on can edit and I'm gonna copy that link and I am going to drop it in the chat. And when you click on that link, it will bring you into this whiteboard. And what I'm gonna have you do is go over here to the elements on the left-hand side of your sidebar. And you can see that I was looking at ice skating and so it brought up all of these graphics for me because I think figure skating would be an amazing Olympic sport that I would love to be good at. And so I would love for you all to find your Olympic sport. If you were to be great at any Olympic sport, which one would it be? And when you find it, so like I said, I just typed in figure skating here. A bunch of different elements popped up. I can search photos, graphics, videos. If I click on graphics, I can find one that I like. Simply click on it and it drops right in. So go ahead and drop in your sport. And one of the things I wanna point out, we're gonna talk a little bit about whiteboards today, is how as you are moving around the whiteboard, you're gonna notice that your name is showing up and everybody's is showing up in a different color. And so it's nice as a teacher for you to be able to see who is interacting, what students are doing within the space, and so it just makes that collaboration a little bit more smooth. And I also can see up here on my toolbar who is in, in this whiteboard. So I can see that I have about five, um, I have about nine people in this whiteboard adding. And you can also see down here on the bottom, I have a timer and I am just gonna set this for one minute and I'm gonna give one minute for everybody to finish adding their Olympic sport to the board. And you can add more than one. I think if I, other than, gym, uh, other than figure skating, I think gymnastics would be my second Olympic sport that I would love to be good at. Or synchronized swimming. I've always thought synchronized swimming is cool. I love it. Lots of great ones being represented here. You can see my timer is counting down, just a few seconds left. You can continue playing and adding to the whiteboard if you would like, but that is how easy it is to be able to bring students into a whiteboard and get them collaborating. And we're gonna be sharing some other ways that you can use the collaboration feature in whiteboards with your students in your classroom. There's lots and lots of whiteboards, uh, whiteboard templates that you can use for that. So we are gonna be moving on to designing in Canva. And in this section, 
Um, we will learn to design while creating an engaging presentation and creating a collaborative whiteboard. So you're going to have, I'm going to share some different ways that you can use these in your classroom. And then I'm going to give you a little time to play and to create. So presentations are something that I think are a great starting point when you are getting used to using Canva. I think it's great for you to be able to create presentations as an educator, but it's also a great one to teach your students how to create presentations. I used to use Google Slides for presentations. When I would do larger presentations where I didn't want to worry about Wi-Fi, I would use IS, iOS Keynote. Now I solely, almost all of the time use Canva because you can make beautiful presentations and there are so many ways to use them and so many great features that are part of the presentations. So here are some different ways that you can use presentations in your classroom. You are able to use them for daily lessons. So if you just any way that you would use presentations normally in your classroom, you're going to be able to do that in Canva as well. You can even take presentations that you already have in your Google Drive and Microsoft, wherever they might live, and you can even bring them over and upload them into Canva, and it will even allow you to edit those presentations and make changes to them. So you don't have to start from scratch. Thinking about a teacher planner and having all of those um, resources within a presentation in your Canva platform, you can do that as well. Having classroom brainstorms, you can do that in a pre presentation. You can do group projects in presentations. You can do gamification. You're gonna find gamification templates in Canva. One of the ways that I love using presentations in Canva is I love to create something. Let's say it was, I've done this with, um, just did this with third graders recently, where I had a presentation slide where I had a book graphic that was just like an empty book cover. And then I had a text box over on the right. And I above the text box, it said, what is, explain what, um, explain what your favorite book of all time is and why. And I made a duplicate of that slide so every student in the class could claim a slide to add to. And I brought them all in. So I brought them all in an edit mode. And then I gave them only five minutes, five minutes to write the title of their favorite book of all time on the book cover, and then write two to three sentences of why it's their favorite book of all time. When those five minutes were over, I went into presentation mode and gave every student a 15 second runway to share their slide as I flipped through them and they were on the big screen in class. And so I love using presentations that way in just a collaborative nature. So I'm gonna show you some things we're gonna, um, learn how to search for templates and be able to find ones that really meet your needs depending on what you want to use your presentation for. I'm going to show you some features to customize your design and there's some really fun new features that have just launched in the last month too that I'll make sure that you're aware of. I'm going to show you how to use Bolt Create. So if you are making certificates or you are making badges or you want to be able to bring a, um, every student in your class into a template using like a mail merge. I'm gonna show you how to access that. Also, um, there is a text to image. There's record yourself and presentation tips. So we're just gonna go over those things and then I'm gonna give you some time to play. So over here, I'm gonna go out of presentation mode so that you can see my full screen. And I first want you to see how you are able to search for templates. So over here on the left-hand side, you're gonna see that there is a design icon. This is where you're going to be able to search for templates that you want to use for your presentation. Now, if I, um, I'm just gonna click out of this 16, well, I'll leave the 16 to nine. When I leave it at 16.9, which is that is the dimension that I have, lots of different presentation um, templates are going to come up that you might want to use. So you can scroll through and you can find a template that you like. So if I didn't already have a template here, you would be able to search one this way. You'll also notice that there is a filter tab on the right hand side of that search bar. This is going to allow you to select different colors that you might want to use 
as well. So maybe you want a presentation that's blue or a presentation that is yellow. You're going to be able to narrow it down that way. And you even can search by language. And once you apply those filters, then it is going to narrow down your search to only things with that that you've chosen. So you can see now I have a bunch of presentation styles that have yellow as kind of a major color within them. Also, you're going to notice that they break down the templates into layouts and into styles. So I love the styles because this is going to allow you to choose a color scheme for your presentation. So maybe you wanted to find presentation um, templates that were kind of had yellow in them, but maybe we've decided, you know what, actually I want to choose this kind of vibrant color palette here. What it's going to do is when you click them, it is going to apply that color scheme to your presentation. So let's say if I clicked on this one here and I clicked on this color palette, it's going to change the color palette to that. Now, if I keep, um, and I, it's better to choose one that has a lot of color on it, but if I keep clicking on that color palette, it's going to continue to change the colors in that slide or in that page until I get the one that I really like. And then once I get the, the arrangement that I really like, then I can go to apply to all pages and it is going to color all of my pages within that template to the color scheme that I have chosen. So it's a great feature to be able to really, I don't, it just allows you to create a, a color scheme that you really love. Now, this particular presentation, I think a lot of the slides have been kind of fixed and locked, so it's not applying them to all, but it will literally apply, um, apply them to all of the pages within the design. <clears throat> also, with the layouts, you're going to be able to choose different layout styles that you might like in your presentation. And I really appreciate this because sometimes I know the content that I want to bring into my presentation, but I need some ideas on how to lay it out. It's going to give you ideas of how to arrange that content in your presentation. So design really allows you to really create the style that you that you like. And again, it takes the kind of the guesswork out of out of design. You don't have to feel like you have to be a graphic designer to make a really visually engaging and beautiful presentation. So I'm not going to go over a lot of these in detail here, but I know we have some brand new to Canvas, so I want to at least mention them, that these, this elements tab right here is where a lot of your designing is going to occur. And you're going to be able to add lines and shapes, graphics, stickers, photos, videos, charts, tables, frames, grids, and audio to your designs. And all of these are copyright safe to use. And so one of the things I really appreciate about designing in Canva is that students don't have to go outside of Canva to bring those things in. We always worry about things um, being copyright protected and maybe not something that's safe to share. They don't have to worry about that because everything is safe to use within the Canva platform. And they have, there's such variety. There's literally millions of graphics and stickers and all sorts of things that they're going to be able to bring in and really be able to isolate their search to exactly what they are looking for, which is great. Also, I want to point out that there are tables and um, charts, and we're going to go into charts in a little bit a little bit later when we go into whiteboards. But tables are really a great way to be able to add content to a presentation and be able to line everything up in the way that you want. And so you'll notice here that each of these uh, squares are text ready. And so as soon as I type in them, the text is going to appear. And you're going to also notice that I'm easily going to be able to add rows. I can easily move this around. I can change colors. I'm able to change the lines and what things I what lines I want invisible, which lines I don't. And so this is a great um, great tool for you to be able to use as an educator when you want to kind of line up the, that information in a table format, but also great for students as they are sharing out um, 
their what they've created and what they've maybe researched and they want to be able to present that in a visually appealing way. Okay, so we are going to then just go down here to text and text is where you're gonna be able to bring in either these font combinations or you can simply bring in a heading, subheading or a little body of text. And so as soon as you click on that text box, those are going to appear. And of course, you are going to be able to change that to anything that you want. Now, I want you to notice that as I clicked on this text box, these features changed up here. And so these are all of the features that I am able to use to change my text. I can add effects if I want to. I'm able to change font size, all of those things. And I'm also able to layer things. Um, this is a new feature over here with the layering and overlapping. I'm able to um, bring things in front of and in back of each other so that you can really create these artful um, combinations as you bring in your text and your different graphics into the presentation. I also want you to notice that when I bring in something else, so let's say I wanna bring in this starburst, now this bar up here changes. So now it's going to allow me to change maybe the color. It's going to allow me to maybe animate and have something come in in a certain way, maybe in, with a certain speed or a certain direction. And I also can make things maybe transparent or not. So always pay attention, whatever you're clicked on within a design and how that changes this toolbar on top. Because whatever you're clicked on, those are the options you're gonna have on this top toolbar. Okay, so I talked earlier about Bulk Create. And I believe um, in, your, in your schools, you have the ability to use apps, the black and white apps. Katie, correct me if I'm wrong. But the black and white apps are here and they are also on the sidebar. And so if you don't see some of these on the sidebar, it's probably because they are tucked away in your apps. And as soon as you use them once, they are then going to appear on this sidebar. But Bulk Create is one that you are able to use. And Bulk Create is going to allow you to bring in data either manually or by CSV so that you can create certificates and badges and um, anything where you would want to mail merge, like you create something and you want to be able to add an individual name to a series of things. And so it just is a great time saver as an educator to be able to do that. And so essentially what you're going to do is you are going to add your text, your image, click done, and you're going to identify what part of, let's say you had a text box on your certificate and you that is the that's the text box that you wanted to mail merge names into. You click that, you click continue, and it's going to it's going to bulk create that um, certificate so that all of the names that you want to include are going to have beyond those individual certificates. So great feature, really easy to use. And again, you can you you can enter that data manually or you can use it, um, you can bring it in by a CSV file. Now, text to image is the one that I do not believe you have access to I, for students. Um, Katie, do you, teachers have access to this? So, te te yeah, teachers should have access to all of the apps. Um, okay. It's just students that have just the black and white ones. And I do wanna just mention that some of the apps there are linked to um, tools that we don't approve in the OCDSB. So it's just to make sure as a teacher, if you're going to link one, just make sure it's something that we approve. For example, Bitmoji's in there, we approve that as a teacher, not as a student, but as a teacher. So you can go ahead and link in your Bitmoji and use your Bitmoji in your slides and your presentations, but there's um, maybe a couple others that are not approved. So just keep that in mind when you're looking through them, but students only have the black and white ones. Perfect, thank you so much for clarifying. I just wanted to make sure I'm speaking correctly. So text to image is one um, that I will share with you. So again, it's one that you'll only have access to, but it's really pretty fun. And so when you think about wanting to create an image that maybe matches your presentation, um, create something fun that you can't find in the Element Library, you're gonna be able to create um, your own image. And so what you can do is you can type in something here. 
So a panda riding a bicycle in the city. And it's going to allow you to choose your style. So I can choose uh, filmic, dreamlike, watercolor, retro, anime, or photo. And I can even choose the aspect ratio here. So let's say I want to try this, um, we'll do filmic. And I'm gonna keep it as a square. Well, let's do a landscape. And I'm gonna click create image. And when I click create image, it is going to come up with four examples of a bicycle, of a panda riding a bicycle in the city. That is hilarious. So if you like those pictures, then great. You can go ahead and you can click on them and you can add them to your design or your presentation. If you don't like them and you wanted to select, um, you know, create something different, you're going to be able to do that too. Or maybe you just want to create again and maybe you don't like what it came up with and you want it to try again. You can also do that. So really kind of a fun way to add your own individuality to a presentation using the AI functionality in Canva. The other, um, the other one that is really, I think, powerful, and it, when you think about student learning and empowering your students to create and visually communicate their ideas in Canva in like a visual way, but then also being able to back that up with audio is really, really incredible. So when you go into your sidebar here and you see the third icon down is uploads. When I click on uploads, this is where it stores all of the images, video, and audio that I have brought in. So I can bring those in from any of these places here, or maybe from just my computer. And it's gonna store them in my uploads no matter what design I'm in. So if I leave this presentation and go into another design that I've created, you're still gonna find those things in that upload library. But what is really cool and what you might not have noticed is that there is a record yourself button right underneath upload files. And so what this allows you to do is to record either just yourself talking with your picture or you can capture the screen and camera or just the screen. So if I go in here and it's also going to um, add your notes there as well. So you have notes and talking points to look at. You can also change effects. So if I wanted to change and added some, add some filters to my picture, I can do that. And I also can change the uh, ratio, the aspect ratio of what my picture is gonna look like. I can flip it and I can even turn it off. And so what I would recommend, this is kind of a workaround. If you want, if a student maybe wants to record themselves, but they don't want their picture show, showing, they can turn their camera off, but this little circle is still gonna show up on the presentation slide. So they might want to cover it with a graphic. So it'll play the sound still, but um, they won't see the little circle that's attached to it. They'll see whatever you place on top of it. So I'm simply gonna click record. I'm gonna, it's gonna count down three, two, one. And I'm just going to talk and share about Canva. Now I chose to un to not have my um, the camera on, so I'm going to show you what that looks like. I'm going to save and exit, and you can see that it brought it brought it in here to my presentation. So this is what I'm talking about. You could add some cover it with something else so that you don't see that, or you could just leave it as is. But then also what it's going to do is it's going to drop that video into my videos in my library. So now I can add that video wherever I want to. So this, because this one had no video showing, I'm gonna choose a different one that I recorded earlier. So let's say I want to bring in this one. I now have this video that I can either bring into a presentation, I can make it as big or small as I want to, 
or I have it now that I can save it and bring it into maybe a video that I'm creating or maybe another presentation that I have. Another kind of fun little um, trick is if you go into your frames in Canva, you are going to be able to kind of cut out your video into whatever shape that you want. So maybe you want it to look like your video is in a computer screen. I can simply drag my video over the computer screen and it's going to drop in. And so you can really do some fun layering of things that you are uh, of your presentations by adding those videos and, and photographs in fun frames just for extra visual added visual um, appeal and really to engage your audience. So love that feature. Also note that when you're in uploads, you can do screencasting as well. So if you wanted to record your screen and be able to demonstrate something, you're going to be able to do that by clicking on either just screen or camera and screen. And so thinking at, for you as an educator, how powerful that is for you to be able to create videos for your students or be able to create presentations with videos embedded, but also for students, how powerful for them to be able to create a design and then be able to talk about it and explain what they did and be able to back it up with extra information. Um, love, love, love the record feature and I use it all of the time. And um, also, there are lots of really cool presentation extras that you're going to find in Canva. So if I go to my present mode, so I'm in a presentation. Now I want to present it like I was um, presenting to you earlier. You're going to see that I can present full screen. I can choose presenter view, which is going to show my notes and all my pages below so that I can see that on my own screen while maybe the full screen is getting presented somewhere else. I can present and record, which allows me to talk through a presentation with my notes. And then I can share that presentation as a link so people can hear me talking through the presentation. The notes won't show in the recording, but you will be able to see them as you record. And then you can also loop a presentation so that it auto plays. So if you have back to school night or an open house and you maybe want a presentation just looping on your screen as you're meeting with families, you're going to be able to do that as well. So then once I go into presentation mode, you're going to see that I have some really cool features here on the bottom. I have a Q&A. So this is a way for me to engage the audience. I think this is the, the best use of this is in an in-person environment because when we are on Zoom, we have a chat box. So you're all able to ask me questions, but in a live situation, you would have to ask a question by raising your hand. So this is going to give you that back channel where you're going to be able to have your audience ask questions. They are going to simply come into the Q&A with this live code and you are going to see, you're welcome to join in if you want to, you're going to see um, people's responses over here to the right. You can hide it at any time or you can show it at any time. And so I love this for the classroom when you know you have students that are the ones that raise their hands that always have an answer and you have the students who have an answer, they just don't feel comfortable raising their hand or they might not wanna share their answer or their thoughts in the same way as someone else. This is giving them an opportunity to share their thoughts and share their voice um, other than audibly and, and in the raising hand approach. Thank you for joining in, that's awesome. So this is kind of an example of what it looks like on the right. If I click on that response, it's going to showcase in the middle of the screen. And so now if I want to address that question or address that thought, I'm able to, and then I simply click out of it and it goes back over here. If I know, sometimes people think, well, what if somebody put something inappropriate, whatever, you can delete the message too and that message will go away. So just kind of a fun way to engage your students in your classroom or if you're presenting to another group of maybe colleagues or adults, another great way to engage your audience. This is going to, the second one over is going to bring up your audience window. And so that is, um, that is a way for you to be able to kind of have your presenter window and your own window. So if you can see, this is what the audience window would look like. 
And so you're gonna see your notes and all of those things um, off to the right. And then you also have the magic keys um, button that gives these special little, uh, just it does these little special things. So for instance, if I am going to click on the M on my keyboard, it is gonna drop the mic and I actually have the wrong view now. Let me switch my screens over. It was showing on my second screen. One of the things that I really love about the magic shortcuts um, options is that they have timers and I use the timer all of the time because, you know, before I would go into YouTube and find a timer and then I would um, have to embed it. But now you can simply add a timer by just clicking any number on your keyboard. So you can get a one minute timer, two minute, all the way up to nine minutes. So really allows you to just add those timers in at any point in your presentation. You don't have to add them ahead of time. Another really, let me show you the mic drop again. Mic drop is really fun. It's really fun when you want to celebrate something, you can throw confetti. That is cool. If you wanted maybe students to present their presentations and you wanted them to kind of have this grand um, entrance into, sh into their sharing, you can. Little fun things that I think just add a special touch to Canva or in Canva that maybe you wouldn't be able to um, access otherwise. And then lastly, there is a remote control. So if I go here to my three dots, I'm going to be able, I can, I can hide my magic cursor if I want to, but I can share a remote control so I can actually advance my slides on my phone and I can even access the timers and all of the magic shortcuts like the mic drop, the confetti from my phone as well. When I am in presentations, I, in person, I use that feature all of the time. I absolutely love it. All right. So let me go back in here. I think we covered everything within the presentations. So now I'm going to go in to um, having you share, just explore a little bit. I'm not going to give a whole lot of time for this because I want to jump into whiteboards too. But what I'm going to have you do, and I'm going to set the timer. And one thing I want you to note is that my timer is showing up on my presentations as well, because I have opened up a whiteboard in my presentation before. So you'll notice that when you go into any page in your presentation, you can expand any one of those pages to a whiteboard for collaboration. And so when you do that, that timer is going to appear on the bottom. And so that's a great way to bring your timers into any presentation that you're doing. But I'm gonna give you, um, I'm gonna give you, let's say four minutes. And in those four minutes, what I would like you to do is I'm just gonna have you go to your homepage in Canva and I'm gonna have you go up here to create a design. And I just want you to open up a presentation. So it's the purple box on the top right of your screen. And then once you've opened up a presentation, I'm gonna have you go up to the top icon, which is design. And I want you to explore templates. And I want you to look for a template that you think you would like to use. And once you find a template that you like, you're simply gonna click on it. And if you like all of the slides, or pages in that template, you're simply gonna click apply all pages. And then once you have done that, then if you wanna work your way through these four different steps, you can add maybe a different layout. Maybe you want to try out those color palettes and apply some colors. You might even want to try exploring how to record yourself with the uploads tab and maybe some of the magic shortcuts when you go into present mode. So four minutes, and then we're gonna um, move in to whiteboards, but just wanna give you a little bit of time to practice some of those, those things I just shared. And then I'm here for questions, so please ask questions if you have them, this is a good time. Sorry, I may have missed something. How do I upload an existing Google slide show? Like the into question. 
So I'm going to go back to my home. Okay. A couple different ways that you can do it. But one of the ways that I think is best is when I'm in my projects, so that I found this on the left-hand side of my home page when you go into projects, and you're going to click on up on the top right corner where it says add new. Mm -hmm. And you can import from an app right here. So if I click on import from app, I can grab things from either my Google Drive, my OneDrive, or my Dropbox. So and so. Cool. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's really helpful. And what's really nice about it is that when it brings it over, it's going to it's gonna keep it in your projects. You'll find it here. But it will make your like text boxes and your elements changeable. So you should be able to change font colors and font styles and be able to add new elements or take away elements. So all of those things are, are available. So it's, it just, you know, working smarter, not harder. <laughs> we need to save time as educators. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're so welcome. Any other questions? Okay. As you are playing, for maybe some of you who are um, advanced users and have been in Canva for a little while, I don't know if you've noticed some of the new features with um, your some of the magic features that Canva has brought in. So I'm going to bring in a picture of a dog. Tisha, are these connected with the AI? Because we think we have that turned oh. off. Oh, okay. So yeah. do you have access to text to image? Yes, we have access oh, okay. to that one. Oh, interesting. Okay. I was thinking if you had access to that, you'd have access to the others. Um, so I can check and see if the others work. I did check recently and I didn't have access, but maybe I checked too oh, quickly okay. after the release. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Do we yeah, have access? To the music, adding the, the music soundtrack? The, yeah, so for the, that would, like adding music as a background in a video, you mean? In a video or in a presentation? Can we do that? You should, well, if you have it, when you go into your elements, you uh -huh. should see your audio tracks right here at the bottom. Okay. And those will drop into any video that you create into the track. Um, one way to know about the magic is if I was to bring in a photo. So I'm just going to bring in a photo of a dog. And if I go up here, so if I click on it and I go up to my edit photo, you would see magic eraser and magic edit next to the background remover. Okay, I'll take a look. Oh, it it is it is there. Okay, I don't think I I don't think that this is maybe considered like the. Magic Write would be considered AI and the Magic Presentations. Those you might not have, but I think- Yeah, we have the Magic Edit and the Magic Eraser. Okay. Okay, cool. Well, that then you should have that. And I think students should have that too, but you would want to check um, for sure. But let me just show you an example of what this does. So if I was to, I'm going to type in something like the beach. So if I um, found a picture, and let's say I wanted to bring in this picture. I should really put this on a new slide so it, I have room here. So if I brought in this picture of, of um, the beach with a shell and I go in, I have to be clicked on it, and I go into edit photo, and then I go in to magic eraser, what it's going to allow me to do is it's going to, I can change my brush size, but I can erase this starfish i'm getting a little crazy here we go and it should go away 
And the difference between this and Magic Edit is that Magic Edit will not only erase whatever you want to erase, but it will replace it with something of your choice. So I'm going to just do that when I'm done. And I let go. So once you let go, it does its erasing. So you kind of have to do it all in one fail swoop and get all of it. And then it should take away that starfish. So that is what Magic Eraser does. And then Magic Edit. If I, if I took, I'm just going to make this really big. If I took away the starfish, whoa. Now it's going to ask me, I want to replace it with a hand dollar. Generate. replaces with a sand dollar. So kind of fun. And the thing that is cool about that too, is it really is, it's like kind of like it's using text to image. So it's erasing what you have and it's really using text to image functionality to replace it with whatever you've requested to replace it with. So just fun thinking about the creative um, freedom that you can have as an educator, but also students can have when they're using that in their classroom. All right, we are going to move on to whiteboards. And we explored whiteboards a little bit already, but I want to bring you into, let's see where I have it here. I'm gonna bring you into a whiteboard to talk about a few different things. So again, just like you were able to find for your presentations, you are going to be able to find templates for your whiteboard up here in that top, um, that top icon. So you'll notice, in the presentations, this said design, and you had layouts and you had the different palette, color palette choices. In whiteboards, it doesn't have that because it's not the same kind of a, a doc type. So you are just gonna be able to find different types of whiteboard templates that you might want to use. So if you, for instance, wanted to do a KWL chart in your classroom, you would be able to click on that KWL chart and it would bring it right in to your whiteboard. And so now you have a template that you can edit and you can change colors, you can do anything that you want to, but now you have a space for students to be able to share what they know, what they want to learn and what they have learned. And they can access um, these sticky notes to be able to add their information. Another thing that I want to show you is that you are going to be able to access grids and frames really easily within a Canva whiteboard by going up to your elements and clicking on uh, grids. And so I'm going to just type, I'm going to just click in the search bar and I can go right to the bottom. And what's nice about this, so let's say you wanted to create, um, maybe you're doing a debate in class and you want your students to share their ideas on either side of a certain topic. I want to create some type of a scaffold or a way for them to do that. I can bring in a grid and then I can simply go up here. I click on each side of the grid. I can simply go in and just choose to color that grid maybe orange on one side, blue on the other side. And so really easy way for you to kind of create your own whiteboard templates very easily. So great way to use those grids in Canva. Also, you are gonna be able to access special elements in the whiteboard. So you'll notice that the whiteboards look a little different. Uh, the elements look a little different in whiteboards than they do in other types of designs because you have these sticky notes. And when you click on a sticky note in a whiteboard, it is gonna bring in a text ready sticky note that has your name already on it. So really easy way for you to see what your students have commented on. And you'll also notice that this quick flow is enabled where I can simply add in either directions more sticky notes. And so a great way for students or you as the educator to um, share ideas. 
Also, you're going to notice that there's these whiteboard graphics. So maybe you give your students five minutes to share their ideas or maybe um, add their thoughts on maybe either side of a topic. If you were doing some type of a debate or maybe five minutes to add to the KWL chart. And then maybe you want your students to use the whiteboard graphics to um, maybe add question icons to different thoughts that they want to learn more about, or maybe you want them to be able to like or heart, you're going to be able to access those without having to search for them. They're just going to show up right here in Canva. Now, a, a new feature that I just learned about today is that when I'm going to show you actually in this whiteboard because you're already on it. If I click on anybody within the whiteboard design, let's see if it'll show up. So if I click on Anne, it's showing that I'm following Anne. So let's say Anne is going to show me something on the whiteboard. My screen is going to follow wherever she is on the whiteboard. And I'm, I'm going to be able to, go, to, to move to where she is. Um, and I, I just learned about this, so I was kind of confused by it at first. But how about, let's do this. If you all can follow me. So click on my icon up here and it should be following me and see if your screen, when you look at um, your own screen, your own whiteboard, not mine, see if your whiteboard moves around to where I'm going and follows me around the board. Does it do that? So the I think the benefit of doing this and following each other is if you wanted, if you wanted your students to follow you and where you were on the whiteboard, they could follow you and they wouldn't, because sometimes the whiteboard is you're going in all these different directions, it's easy to get lost. And when you wanted to release everybody, you can release everybody. So again, brand new feature, I haven't really played with it much, but I thought that was kind of cool. Also, um, another thing that I think, um, oh, I had it and I lost it. Oh, a good tip. If you go down here to the 33%, you can click fit and your whiteboard is going to zoom right back to center again. So sometimes you can kind of get lost on a whiteboard and you want to just get back home again. You always can get back home by clicking fit. And that's a good tip to show your students as well. All right. We are going to wrap this up. I already showed you timers. Um, charts is something that really is a great way to bring your um, different whiteboards to life and you're going to be able to visually communicate data. And the great thing about charts is that you are going to be able to either manually add your information, your data to the chart. And as you add the data, your chart is going to change, but you also can upload it from Google Sheets or upload a CSV. So if you have your data somewhere else, it will automatically import it into your chart for you. And if you decided that you wanted to try a different type of chart, it will automatically convert that data to any chart that you choose from this drop that down. So another great way to be able to kind of visually communicate that data in a whiteboard um, when you have your students collaborating. And then you can comment on anything too. So um, when you go in, click on anything within your whiteboard, you see this comment button here and you're able to give feedback. You're even able to give stickers. So I think this is a really powerful way to get your students just collaborating, brainstorming together and sharing their, their ideas in your classroom. Does anybody have questions about th that before I kind of share some different ways that you can use whiteboards? Don't see anything in the chat. Actually, Tisha, we did have a question earlier on um, with the whiteboard, and you have your mm -hmm. timer there on oh, the yeah. whiteboard. Um, the timer only shows up on your whiteboard. Is that right? Because we're not seeing it on our side. Yeah, I've had this come up before. I think that I think that if you were doing like if you were in a classroom situation and you had your whiteboard on the screen, like on your big screen, and you displayed yours, it would show up. But on their individual um, whiteboards, it's not going to, I think, I think it would be interesting to go in. I think from what I, if I remember from last time we talked about this, if you click on that whiteboard, it might start a timer for you too. Does it do that? 
Uh, I can try it. I think everybody might have individual access to start those timers. That's a good question. Yeah, I can start my own timer. Yeah, so I would say if you were in the classroom situation, I would set that timer and just have it kind of displayed on your on your big screen. So there's, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, one other question, just because I know um, teachers usually ask this, because this looks like, for us, it looks sort of like Jamboard, and mm -hmm. um, yeah, but it's like way better than Jamboard. <laughs> and one of the questions we always get asked about is, can you lock features on the whiteboard so students mm -hmm. can't alter them? And then can you also, yes. um, sort of stop students so completely like can you lock yeah. some elements but then can you also lock the whole thing yes so i i think partially yes so if i'm gonna go i'm gonna get out of here really quick so if i go to my whiteboard i can anything that i click on i'm able to lock so if i click on this i go to my three dots and i'm able to lock I am able to lock it. In fact, that was already locked. If I just do like a, if I swoop over a bunch of things at one time, I can lock a lot of things at once by clicking lock. So that's how you would do that. Um, as far as kicking, you mean like kind of kicking somebody out of the whiteboard altogether? Well, I just mean giving, like turning off the edit access. Like you want to yeah, have that as can. like a snapshot. Yes. So if you just simply go and let's just kind of, let's see what happens here. If I change this to view and it changes that link, but does it, it doesn't kick you out, does it? Does it allow you to move around on there? Let me just test it. Oh, it's asking me to reload the page. Oh, okay. and then it says, I need to request access. Yeah. So I think you probably are in there until you reload or refresh and then it will you won't be in there anymore. So you that's how you would change that access is just going up here. Yeah, that's great cuz then what you can do is you can change the access, the students would reload and then they can go back in just as a viewer, which is great yeah. cuz that's one of the features that teachers are always looking for. Okay, we want them to stop now. <laughs> They keep yes. adding things and we need them to stop now. So exactly. that's a great, great feature. Thank exactly. You. And I and I know we are running um we're running a little um running to the end of our time, but I just want to share that there's just so many ways that you are able to use whiteboards. And so these are just a few of the ways, but if you go into the whiteboard library when you're in that um, you know, that that main page in your homepage in Canva, you're going to just you're going to see all of the ideas and all of a sudden I think what you're going to do is be like, oh my goodness, I could bring this into a whiteboard. I could bring this into a whiteboard. There's just really endless possibilities of how you're able um, to create within there. So I'm going to be sharing with you this full deck. A um, couple things that I just want you to know is that you can store things in folders. So when you go into your element um, library on the side of your sidebar, you, if you click, hover over them and click the little dots, you're going to be able to store your favorite elements. And I love that because, um, I love that because then things that you use all the time, you're going to be able to access really easily and, um, they will store in your, um, in your projects on the side of your sidebar, you'll be able to find all of your folders of all of your things. And you can even do that. You can organize your uploads, all of the videos and things that you have in your uploads um, in folders as well. And I'm gonna be sharing this that has all of these links to playbooks that has little like um, icon element sets that you might wanna bring into your classroom for designing. Um, you are going to be able to embed media. So just know that anytime you click, you save a link and you drop it into a presentation or a graphic, it's not going to just drop that link. It's going to actually embed. So you don't have to have an embed code to embed things in Canva. All you need to do is copy the, the, the link and drop it into your design and it's going to automatically appear. And so it's really great too, when you're thinking about working with students, um, 
if maybe you wanted them to design something. So this is a good, I'm thinking of, um, oh goodness, I'm so sorry, I forgot your name. We were talking at the beginning. Um, she, I think she left early. It's Laurel. It's Laurel. Laurel. Um, she was talking about students maybe not being motivated or showing their best effort. Maybe have them work for 30 minutes and then copy a view only link of what they've designed onto a whiteboard and have a gallery walk on a whiteboard and have everybody show their designs of what they've created. So now it kind of ups the ante. Now it's not just my teacher seeing what I've designed, but now the whole class is seeing it. And that might kind of um, be a game changer too. So I talked about locking all of the things and then I am going to make sure, um, like I said before, you have all of the resources that you need to be able to continue learning about Canva because they're really, it does so much. There's so many amazing features. Um, there's a translate now where you can translate your designs into over a hundred languages. Um, the draw tool on the left-hand side of the toolbar now will allow you to annotate Students are going to be able to do close reading. They can sketch note right from the sidebar in not only designs, but also on the whiteboard as well. And then we already talked about magic eraser and edit and um, how students can leverage that. So I know some of you need to go. So I want to honor your time because you need to go to those porches and <laughs> have a nice evening. But um, I am going to drop the link right now to this presentation. And then I'm going to be sharing afterwards with Katie a one page website of the um, this presentation and then some additional resources that you all can have access to and make sure you know that you can reach out to me at any time. So always happy to answer any questions that you have after this presentation. And I'm dropping the view only link of this presentation right now. So there you have it. So thank you so much, everyone. I love being with you today. Thank you so much, Tisha. I do want to point out, you just had it on the slide there, but um, we do, this is Canva Essentials 2. It's actually a three-part series and we have uh, part three coming up. So I'll send out the link to sign up and the information on when that is. We, Tisha and I have to decide. So <laughs> I'll send you that information as soon as I have that. Um, and I'm going to stop the recording right now. So if anybody has any questions, you can go ahead and unmute or 